Welcome to the FAA Policy and Guidance Module, everyone's favorite. The objectives of this module are to accomplish two things. One, make sure all unit members know where to find the most current published material that the FAA has provided. And two, discuss the need to follow the FAA's directives, orders, policy, and advisory material. Looking at Revision C of the Westar ODA Procedures Manual, you'll notice that references to FAA publications include parens after the FAA guidance callouts, implying that the ODA is always using the latest revision. Though this makes it much easier to ensure there is a common understanding and reduces the number of ongoing edits needed, it does not, however, reduce the need to make sure everyone is checking regularly for updates that may come out. The expectations is that all projects are conducted in line with the appropriate regulations, policy, and guidance that's available. The primary regulations that are applicable to the work that Westar accomplishes are Part 21 for certification processes, Part 23 and 25 airworthiness standards for small and transport aircraft, Part 145 for the repair station, and Part 183 as it relates to the ODA. All of these regulations are online, though Westar often has working copies of the regulations in their reference library. In general, Westar monitors the feeds and checks the websites for awareness of new published material. They maintain a reference library, recognizing the FAA's website, or the Regulatory and Guidance Library, or RGL, as the most up-to-date source. As a unit member, if you haven't visited the FAA website or RGL, it's time to try it out and bookmark the site for future reference. Westar realizes that not everyone has the same interest in monitoring the FAA publication stream. So to help out, an email is sent out monthly to notify unit members of any new guidance or changes that, has, that have come out from the agency. The expectation is that if everyone stays abreast of new information, the better the projects will fare by staying current. Because projects need to be conducted with the most current guidance, project certification plans include a listing of relevant policy that's applicable, including revisions and dates. This provides a good source to know what's being used, as well as offers evidence down the road if questions were ever asked, like, how do you know you use the latest guidance on your project? When reviewing a certification plan, unit members need to spend time looking at what's listed to make sure they're up to speed on the most recent information, as well as helping to double check that the latest is actually listed. This extra set of eyes really helps everyone. At the top of the guidance hierarchy, FAA orders are permanent directives primarily focused on defining the agency's policies, organization, responsibilities, methods, and procedures. The ODA must follow the FAA orders fully but the implementation may look a little bit different within the ODA because in many cases the procedures manual has captured the essence of the defined processes rather than the explicit details they may provide. Revision B of the procedures manual was approved at the end of August in 2015. There's been a lot of new material published by the FAA since that time. We're not going to cover it all here, but only recap some of the most important items that affect the ODA. The following orders were published or updated. 404026B for flight test information, 8100.15, which is directly applicable to the ODA, 8110.4C had chain 6 just recently come out, 8110.121 talks about TCDS notes, 8110.103 updated AMOC processes, 8130.2 and 8130.21 updated a lot of information regarding um, airworthiness approval tags. 8150.1D updated the TSO program and 8300.16 was updated to talk more about the major repair and alteration data approvals. As you most likely know, advisory circulars or ACs offer methods, procedures, and practices that are acceptable for showing compliance with the regulations or grant requirements. They may also contain explanations of certain regulations or best practices, but they do not create or change a regulatory requirement. They are solely used as ways to help the aviation community at large learn how to approach regulatory compliance. 
Advisory circulars since August 2015 include 2125, which talks about modifying seat systems, 2167A, which talks about enhanced vision systems, 2188, which helps understand compatibility of adding type design to an aircraft, and 2146, which is an addendum to the TSO program order change that we talked about earlier. Finally, more specific information can be, be provided by the FAA in policy memorandums. They usually come about because someone asked a question or there's evidence that industry needs clarification. Looking at recent policy memos since the last manual was approved includes DM53, which looks at the 8130.2 change, PM19, which helps OMTs understand how to o oversee ODAs a little bit better, PM03, which is about PMA data, GM14, and GM10 both talk about the new TIA form from the FAA. GM09 talks about the accompanying new TIR form. DM04 and PM04 talk about the 8130-3 tags and the new requirements there. DM09 allows ODAs to use FAA forms but tweak them for their own needs. And then 1601 talks about PMA data. In wrapping up this module, the big takeaway from all this review of FAA policy and guidance is knowing that the latest FAA published material is housed at the RGL online library, and that as a unit member, you're responsible for being knowledgeable about the guidance and using it when making technical decisions. If you have any questions regarding this module, please contact Jeff, the ODA Lead Administrator, at the posted phone number or email address.